Hello everybody, thank you for joining me today for my review of the Eurocrypt of Christopher Lee collection. I did an unboxing of this a while back and uh, I've watched pretty much everything. There's a few little features here and there that I didn't get to, but uh, I feel like I'm ready to give my overview on this set. Um, so what do I think about this set overall? I think this set is very good overall, uh, but there are as with all box sets, some ups and downs. So I'm gonna go in order from things I like the least to the things I really thought were great, and we'll go from there. So there is one thing uh, about the set I didn't like, and that is this movie right here, Challenge the Devil. You may have noticed that since I started this channel back up, I've tried to be pretty positive about everything, and I've just kind of tried to take that outlook, see the good in everything, but if I really don't care for a film, I'm not just going to tell you that it's great, and I really didn't care for this film, Challenge the Devil. Uh, I didn't think it was very good at all, to be honest, and I would call it the dud in the set. There's a few problems with this movie. Number one, it's one of the shortest movies in the set. It's only 79 minutes, and it probably should have been 40. There's really only about 40 minutes of plot in this movie. This movie, to give you a, a brief overview of it, is told mostly in flashback. We see a man, and he basically tells in flashback to when he was younger why he got in the situation he is in now. So uh, himself and a group of friends basically go to this old castle. They're just kind of hanging out, getting high, fooling around. And... Um, they come across this elderly gentleman who is Christopher Lee, who's only in this film for about 10 minutes, so don't watch the film just for him. Although I will say, to be fair, that Christopher Lee doesn't just phone it in. He's actually excellent in the short amount of time he's in this film. Uh, unfortunately, every time he's not in this film, it's really bad. Some of the other acting's pretty poor, and I thought in all the other movies in this set, the acting was good, but the supporting players don't really do a great job. This is also one of those movies where things take forever to happen. Like people will just be staring, walking around in a room for five minutes. There's this scene where the group is like high and they're like dancing around and it goes on forever. And it's almost so bad it's good, but it's kind of just so bad that it's boring. It doesn't really work. There's also this weird nightclub scene in the earlier part of the movie where this girl singing some weird song and doing like this flirty weird dancing that doesn't really go with the happy tone of the song. This movie's just very strange. Sometimes there's a reason why a movie's obscure and this is one of those cases. Did not like Challenge the Devil and I would say the only way you should ever watch this is if you have to see every single Christopher Lee movie. Now on to the middle of the road. This TV show Theater Macabre. The reason I say it's middle of the road is because this thing's all over the place. Some episodes are great. Some episodes are just absolutely terrible and almost unwatchable. And then there's like some other episodes that are kind of just there. They're middle of the road. They're fine. But what's really bizarre about this show is that there's some episodes that are all these things at once. And I'll explain further. There's some episodes of this show that start out great and then they become terrible halfway through. There was also one or two episodes I'm like, this is a real dud. And then it became good like the last five minutes. I like the ending. Very strange. So is this worth watching? I would say if you really love anthology shows, you might want to check this out. But I don't think it's essential. And another thing to note about this show is that there's not really as much horror as I thought there would be. There are some horror elements to most of the stories, but I would hardly call them all macabre unless I just have a different definition of what that word means. But um, I would call it more of a period drama anthology show, which I've never seen before. So there's that. It's definitely unique and different. And I do want to say about all these things, even the movie I didn't like, I'm really glad all this stuff is being preserved on Blu-ray. Uh, I think that's very important for the history of television and film. Also, if you want to watch this just for Christopher Lee, he's really uh, only in about a minute at the beginning of each episode for the intro, and then he comes back for about 10 to 20 seconds at the end of the episodes. And while his segments are good and amusing, you know, don't think that he's in these whole episodes. He's just the host. So, you know, kind of like how Rod Serling was with Twilight Zone. He's 
only in the episodes for a brief time. But nice to have it preserved, kind of a mixed bag for me. Now, the good news is everything else about this set is really good and a couple things are great. So next up, we'll go to Sherlock Holmes and the Deadly Necklace. This film I thought was good. I thought it was solid. Is it a great all-time film? No. But is it a very good film? Yes. If you like uh, these kind of Sherlock Holmes films from this time period, or even some of the earlier ones, you know, like from the 30s and 40s, I think you'll enjoy this film. Uh, as a film fan, I wouldn't say it's an essential film, but I would see if you're a Christopher Lee fan, it might be essential just to see his take on playing Sherlock Holmes. He does an excellent job. And unlike a couple of the other things I talked about he's barely in, he's in this a ton. He's pretty much in this whole movie from beginning to end. So I would say it's essential if you're a Christopher Lee fan. You know, it, it's got some of the same pluses and minuses as most of these types of films of the time. There's uh, some good writing. The plot is interesting. You know, but the film does have a few lulls. There's not a lot of action. It's kind of just point A to point B as, you know, he figures out and solves the case. But all the acting is really solid and the mystery is interesting and it's just a good solid movie. I don't really have anything more to say about it. So I do recommend it though. Next on the list, interestingly enough, the film I thought I would like the best and it actually comes in well for me, but not as the best film on this set is the uh, Torture Chamber of Dr. Sadism. I saw a lot of people say this was the best film on the set, and I respectfully disagree. Although I will say the second half of this movie is fantastic and as good as anything on the set. My issue is that the first half of this movie is a bit slow. The setup, this is one of those movies where, and this isn't really a big spoiler because it happens like in the first three minutes of the film in the intro, Christopher Lee is a count who basically gets sentenced you know, to die or condemned and he puts a curse that he's going to get even with all the descendants, you know, of the family that's done this to him. Not an original or new plot. Now, I will say the first half of this film, which is mostly set up, is done okay. I just thought the film got a little repetitive and could have moved more quickly. But there's still some nice imagery. This is the only film in color in the set. And I thought that the cinematography was beautiful. And there's something about the look of color films from this time period in the 50s and 60s that I just like the looks of these films. So the first half of the film is good. It's solid. I just didn't think it was like extraordinary. Maybe I expected a little bit too much. I don't know. But the second half of this film, once they get to the castle, and it is only about half the film if I'm recalling correctly, is really great. There's some interesting things that go on inside the castle. I don't want to spoil it, but uh, Christopher Lee plays a great typical Christopher Lee role here. Again, he could be in the film a little more, but he's in this one a decent amount, and he definitely makes his impact felt. Also, the other acting is really good in this film as well. Would I say it's essential? This one, I would say if you're a horror fan, it's not essential, but you could definitely still watch it and enjoy it. I would say if you're a Christopher Lee fan, though, this one is essential. It's definitely a good enough movie and performance by him to be. And again, I'm really glad this one's preserved on Blu-ray because this was another one that, you know, was kind of tough to find in good quality for a while. Next up, one that surprised me, Castle of the Living Dead. I had kind of heard mixed reviews on this one. I thought this was great, honestly. Um, so this one's got another simple plot, very similar to a lot of the other ones. I kind of like how simple some of these horror plots were. I think now they kind of overcomplicate things sometimes. So this one, Castle of the Living Dead, is basically about a traveling group of performers, entertainers, and it seems like they're a little short on cash. They're having some internal conflicts for sure. So they get invited to this castle um, of Christopher Lee basically to put on a show, a performance. Uh, and this film was entertaining from beginning to end. I thought this one moved at a great pace. Um, it's black and white, but I love the cinematography in this movie. The, some of the sets and locations were great. Uh, all the acting is pretty strong in this one. Christopher Lee is great, as always. And as an added bonus, you get Donald Sutherland, and I think it's his debut, playing two roles. I'm not sure why they gave him two roles, but he does a great job. So if you're a fan of Christopher Lee and or Donald Sutherland, I would definitely recommend this movie. But I think this one's good enough on its own to just be a recommendation anyway. It's a very, very good horror film, and one I wasn't really familiar with up till now. That's what I love about sets like this. 
Probably a movie I would never have seen if I hadn't gotten this box set. So a strong recommendation for Castle of the Living Dead. But the crown jewel here, everyone, is Crypt of the Vampire. This movie was fantastic. <laughs> I mean, it was really good. I don't know why it doesn't get more publicity. I don't see it on any list of best horror films. Maybe it was just me. I thought this was great. So this one has a slightly different plot, although similar in some ways too. And this one, Christopher Lee actually plays a father who's not sure he's concerned that his daughter might be behind some murders that are going on based on a curse that has been passed on, possibly by his ancestors, or is something else possibly going on. It's kind of a mystery horror film, and you're not really sure. And the ending actually did kind of legitimately fool me. I kind of figured out what was going on, but I didn't have it completely right. This one was, I thought, the best directed, the best acted, the most suspenseful. Christopher Lee's great in this movie. It's nice to see him in a different kind of role. And he is in this one quite a bit as well. But there were two actresses here, uh, Ursula Davis and Vera Velmont. I had never heard of, and I liked them both a lot in this movie. This movie, I think some of the... I won't go too much into it to spoil it, but some of the themes in this movie, uh, I think, were a little bit ahead of their time. And this movie has aged, dated the best, in my opinion, of any movies on this set. I could definitely see this one remade, which I hope they don't do, because there's too many remakes. But I could see this one done as a modern-day horror movie. And as a matter of fact, I saw a lot of influences of other movies in this one. And this one has like some interesting uh, scenes in it as well. Um, you know, not the kind of violent kill scenes you see in a movie now, which I have nothing against. But, you know, it's nice to see this kind of film too, where a lot of things are suggested. But there's a lot of interesting scenes in this movie. And I was on the edge of my seat. This one from beginning to end, I loved. I just loved everything about this movie. I would call this one a minor masterpiece. Uh, definitely essential for any horror fan, not just Christopher Lee fans. I mean, Christopher Lee fans should definitely watch this. But I think fans of all horror movies, especially like gothic kind of creepy house horror movies, should definitely watch Crypt of the Vampire. This was the highlight of the set for me. Another thing that's great about this set is this book, uh, written by Jonathan Rigby. There is a lot of great information in this book. If you're a reader, this is a fantastic read on uh, Christopher Lee and just on horror in general and if you're not a big reader there's a lot of really really you know like cool pictures like this throughout the whole book like there's just a lot of great images in here so even if you don't love reading and you're more into you know like visual media pictures and stuff there's a lot of great pictures in this book as well I mean it's just it's fantastic um, also in here there was a disc of special features which is good. Now, I've seen better discs of special features in sets like this, but it's definitely not the worst I've seen either. You know, it's typical. There's interviews on Christopher Lee, on the movies, things like that. I would say if you're a Christopher Lee fan, watch the disc of special features. If you're not, I don't think there's anything essential in it that you have to watch. And also, one of the films, um, Castle of the Living Dead, has a CD soundtrack. Uh, the whole soundtrack for the film and it's really good. If you're into horror music, uh, I wouldn't say it's all-time great or essential, but it's a nice listen, and I appreciate that Severin put something like that in the set. You know, they don't have to put a CD soundtrack in here, but they did, and I listened to it, and I enjoyed the Castle of the Living Dead soundtrack. So what are my overall thoughts on this box set? Is it worth the uh, somewhat hefty price tag? I've seen some people complain about it. I do think it's worth it. Uh, you did admittedly have one kind of a dud film with Challenge the Devil, which I could have probably picked a better film for this set. I get including things that are super rare, but in this case, the movie's just not very good at all. And Christopher Lee's barely in it, so for a Christopher Lee set, it's kind of a weird choice. Um, you know, the theater macabre, I could take or leave, but I appreciate it being preserved on disc. Everything else is from good to great, and I honestly think with the book... And, you know, the top three movies, Torture Chamber of Dr. Sadism, was very good. Maybe I undersold it a little. You know, um, Crypt of the Vampire was great. And also Castle of the Living Dead being very good. Like I said, plus the book and all the extras, I to me, for me, it was worth the price tag. And I think for Christopher Lee fans, it would be as well. So that'll do it for my review of the Euro Crypt of Christopher Lee. More videos on the way soon. And, uh... 
If you made it to the end of this, thanks for watching. I know this was a long one. Thank you.